After posting a video on creating overlay tools, I got several people ask how to go about creating an overlay dropdown for opening a scene in the project without having to search the project view for that scene. Well, don't say I never read the comments and let's go about creating that, shall we? So let's get to it. Now I have a tools folder under my editor folder and I'm gonna create a C-sharp script and I'm gonna call this scene selection overlay. We're we'll opening that up in Visual Studio. There we go. Now it's not gonna be a mono behavior. It's actually going to be a tool bar overlay and we'll get that from the Unity editor overlays. Okay, now this is gonna have two attributes. The first attribute is gonna be the overlay attribute. And you just wanna say where this is gonna show up and this will be the scene view. Oh, there we go. And we get that from Unity Editor. And you actually wanna give it a name as well. And we're gonna say scene selection, that'll do. Okay, the next attribute we're gonna put in here is the icon. Now, usually I put the path in here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create and we won't need these functions. I'm gonna create a constant because I wanna use the icon elsewhere. So I don't know if people know this, but you can actually, if you're gonna put some, a, a string or anything like that in an attribute, you can actually create as a constant and then use it, and then you can use it elsewhere. And this helps if you're using these things in multiple locations and you change a path somewhere, it changes everywhere else. Okay, so I've already put this PNG into my folders in my project under assets editor icons unity icon so that's all good and we'll just copy and paste that constant into there okay brilliant so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this constructor for this so scene selection overlay and we've got call base here now i'm going to leave this blank for the moment but basically this is going to have the ID of the tool that's added to this toolbar overlay, which we're gonna create right now. Now, unlike the other videos I've produced so far on overlays, this one's actually gonna use a class called Editor Toolbar Dropdown Toggle, because it's a dropdown. All the scenes that we have in our project are gonna drop down in this overlay, and we're gonna be able to select one of them, and that's going to load it. So, we'll create a class, and we're just gonna create this straight under our scene selection overlay class because we're not going to use it anywhere else we're just going to use it here and i'm going to call this the scene drop down toggle and as i said this is going to come from the editor toolbar drop down toggle and we're also going to need an interface called i access container window that will be required Okay, so that comes from the toolbars, Unity Editor toolbars. So there we go. So that's our class started. And we're going to need to, again, set up an attribute to say what it is, so Unity knows. And this is going to be a toolbar element. Now, we're going to need an ID here and then say that it's in the scene view. Now, the ID, like before, I like to create these as constants in case we change them and use them elsewhere. So we're going to say this id and we're just going to give this scene selection overlay and it just has to be unique so don't worry too much about what you name it but obviously name it something you'll understand if you see it so there we go scene selection overlay slash scene drop down toggle now i use this id in here and again i want to say that this is only for the scene view so we'll pop that type of there and we'll close that out Great, so that's the start of the class for this toolbar dropdown. Uh, we're going to need to do several things here, but first I want to get rid of this error, which is asking, you know, you need to implement this particular function. So we'll put it in. And what it is, is it's editor window and container window. And again, I'm gonna roll over a few of these bits. I will leave a link to the previous videos on creating ever overlays in the description, and you can jump back and get more information. This is more just getting to the point of, I wanna show you how to create this drop down toggle. So we'll need to have an constructor. There we go. And also before I forget, we're going to need to 
add this ID into the base. Hence why we made it a constant there and not just put in the string here. We want to use it actually in this location and this location, make it a constant. It's just nice and neat. So back to the constructor. We'll set up some text and we'll say this is scenes. Now this is what's going to be written in the actual drop down toggle at the start. Now you could mess around with this and put other things in, but I think scenes is a is a nice label for this particular item. So tooltip, select a, oh, spell it right. Select a scene to load. And then I actually want to give this an icon as well. Now this will actually display. And if you've seen the previous video, again, you'll see where this icon actually displays and you'll see it in a minute. Now we're going to need to load this icon from the asset database. It doesn't just come up as an attribute like you have here. We're going to need to load it. So we'll use load asset at path and it's going to be a texture 2D. There we go. And the path to this is actually, I'm going to use the exactly the same one as this because it's nice and simple. And it's actually just a little unity icon that I set up, uh, but you can use whatever icon you want for this particular part. Now, when we, when we press on this drop down toggle, we actually want to have something happen. We actually want to have it show the scene menu, the number of scenes that we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach to the drop down clicked event and we're going to create our own one and we're going to call this show scene menu and we just create a function for that so in this we're not going to throw not implement an exception because we actually want to create it we're going to create a generic menu uh, which we'll call menu and this is going to be a new generic menu there we go and this is just the menu sort of route that we want for our actual toggle. Okay, so now you've got a choice here and I'm gonna give you a choice. I'm gonna show you one way of doing it and I'm gonna indicate how to do it the other way, but do you want to select the scenes from the whole of your project or do you want to select the scenes that are just in your editor build settings? So for instance, any scene that you've added to the build, you could come in and say editor build settings and then you could just get the scenes from here and you could iterate through those and only use these. And you could also say, is that scene enabled in the build settings or is it not? Now I'm not gonna do that because I want this particular tool to select a scene from anywhere in my project because I might have test scenes in there that I'm not gonna to add to the build menu, but I'm actually going to have in my project itself. But it's your choice, that's the other way to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all the scenes. Now I've done this in another video, but you can actually use the asset database functionality to find assets. And this will return all assets of a type with a label, etc. And I've gone into that in another video, but here I'm only interested in assets of the scene type. So all scenes within my project, I want those to return. Now I'm gonna create a for loop and I'm actually going to go, oh, not that one. I'm actually going to go through all my scene GUIDs here and I'm going to use the asset database GUID to asset path to get me the path to these particular scenes. So asset database dot acid uh, GUID to asset path. There we go. And oh, we will use scene GUIDs and just the index. There we go. Okay. Now, we could show the whole path in the drop down, but that would look terrible, especially if you've got very long names and very big folder names, you'd have massive toggle coming up. So I'm just going to use the name. Now I tend to name all my scenes different, even if they're in different folders, just because when you add it to the build settings and use it later, or you do any of these drop downs, it makes it a little bit easier to read, but you know, you do you. So path, what I want to do is I want to get the name. So we'll use, the path library from system.io. Now this path basically enables us to do some really good helper functions. And here I'm interested in get file name without extension. But if you use just get file name, you have dot unity after everyone. And that just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? So here we go. We'll get just the name of the scene. And now I want to actually add it to my menu, this generic menu up here. 
So we'll menu add item and we're going to use new GUI content and we're going to use the name here because we can't just add the string. Now we want to say whether we want this item ticked or not. Now, I like to have this where the current scene is ticked in the dropdown, hence why I'm showing you this. Now to do that, what we can actually do is we can get the current scene and then do a comparison. So up here, let's, we don't want to do it every time in our loop. So we'll use scene because that's what we're going to get back from it from the scene manager. And we'll do scene. Uh, oh, that we want you to call this current scene for context. And we'll do editor scene manager, which uses scene management. And we'll get the active scene. There we go. So this is giving us what scene is loaded currently in our scene view. So current scene, we are going to do a comparison and we'll do a string comparison and we'll just use the name here of the current scene and we'll compare it to the name that we have. And of course, if that equals zero, then it's true and that will tick what our current scene is. Excellent. Now, again, if you were using the editor build settings or you're using straight editor scene manager to only load scenes within the scene, then you could do that with just the actual scene comparisons. You could compare just the scene. But here, because we're bringing down the path and the name from all the find assets, we're going to do a string comparison there. OK, now the next thing we want to do is we actually want to run a function we, that happens when we press on this thing. And of course, that's going to be to open the scene. Now, we could just do here editor scene manager dot open scene and then use path. But the problem with this is if you were to run this, then what would happen? Oh, hang on. I need to make that work. There we go. Now, if you were to run this, it would actually open the scene, whether your scene is saved or not. So if you've made a load of changes and you press this drop down, then it would just ignore all those changes and you'd lose everything, which doesn't work for us. So we want to basically check whether our scene is dirty, you know, whether there's changes been made and then allow the user to save from that point. Now, let's just finish off this part. So menu dot show as context. So that will show up the menu when they press on it from this drop down click. But let's create that open scene functionality. So open scene. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send in the current scene that we've already collected. And we're going to send in the path. Now, the reason we want the current scene is because we want to check if it's dirty. So we say if current scene dot is dirty, then we're going to ask the user whether they want to save. Now, you could create your own dialogue and say put in all the title and everything, but it's actually a really good helper function here called editor scene manager dot save current modified scenes if user wants to. So basically that will do the dialogue and everything for you and you don't have to mess around. And it will look exactly the same as all the other dialogues they get when they close a scene and that scene hasn't been saved, it's dirty. So the last thing we want to do is we want to edit a scene manager, the same here, open scene. And we'll copy and we'll just put an else statement here because if it's not dirty, then we don't care. We'll just open that scene straight away. Now, of course, we want to swap this out because we're using our own function now and we're just going to send in the current scene and a path. There we go. That is all the code we need to create this toolbar. Now, just as a cleanup, we don't need these. There we go. So we'll save and we'll drop back into Unity. And before we continue, if you're finding these tips useful, make sure to press the like button, get subscribed and let everybody know about the channel. So we can now press space in our scene view and select this new overlay. And as you can see, it comes up in the top corner of our scene view. And now we can select scenes from this nature package asset that I've imported into this blank project. There's a link in the description if you're interested in this asset, which happened to be on sale when I made this video. And like the other toolbars, if we really want, we can have it down here and you can see we've got scene selection and that's our scenes text. And we can just press the drop down here and have it. So you could have it right down here or you could have it just linked right to the bottom there if you want to have a bottom bar. So all the same things that you could do with the other overlays that I showed you, you can do with this particular overlay.
Now out of interest, let me know in the comments if you would pick only scenes in the build or if you would add a toggle to switch between all scenes and those build scenes. And hassle me if you want to get the extension and you want me to show you how to actually make that happen. Plus, if you like this tip, I'm sure you're going to love the next one that's shown you on your screen now.